Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on inflammation and angiogenesis. In this video, what we're going to talk about is a protein known as antithrombin-3. And we're also going to discuss the mechanism of action of the anticoagulative drug, heparin. Okay, so antithrombin-3 and heparin is the topic for this video. Right, so let me explain the structure, what we're going to do. We're going to start off by a brief, um, a brief description of um, the hemostasis pathway. I'm not going to go through it in huge detail. I'm just going to summarize the main uh, results. We're then going to look at the coagulation cascades, both the intrinsic and extrinsic coagulation cascades, because they actually are quite important to know uh, for uh, the mechanism of action of antithrombin-3. We're then going to talk about... Um, we're going to talk about thrombosis, and then we're going to talk about how the body has natural mechanisms to prevent thrombosis. Okay, and one of these natural mechanisms is antithrombin-3. We're then going to talk about uh, the activation of antithrombin-3 by endogenous uh, the uh, heparan sulfate, and also heparin, uh, and then we'll talk about what heparin actually is, because it is a, uh, is a structure that you will find within the body, uh, but it's a structure that we can give as a drug to try and prevent thrombosis. So it's used as an antithrombotic. Okay, right. So, a lot to do then. So, we'll start off with our basic revision of the hemostasis pathway. Okay, so, basically, if you cut yourself, let's say I cut my finger open, then I will bleed. And the main reason I will bleed is because I have cut through blood vessels, okay? So, uh, let's, for example, take uh, an arteriole, okay? So here is our arteriole, drawn here. So an arteriole is a small blood vessel, but it's not minuscule. It's not like a capillary where it's a single cell thick, uh, but it's not like an artery where it's a big macroscopic structure that you learn about in anatomy and you can palpate. It's a small blood vessel, but it's more than one cell thick, so it's got a decent flow of blood through it. Okay, and let's say we make a cut in the side of our arteriole. So let's say here comes our knife and it's going to make an incision like this. So it's going to uh, make a hole in the wall of the blood vessel. Okay, so you're going to start getting blood leaking out of the lumen of the blood vessel into the surrounding tissue. Okay, and the fancy word for bleeding is hemorrhage. Okay, and this is the English, sorry, the British English spelling of hemorrhage, but I think the American uh, English spelling of uh, hemorrhage would not have the A there. Uh, it's the same thing, though. Right, okay, uh, so the question is, how do you stop bleeding? What is the body's physiological response to getting a cut in the side of this arteriole? How does it clog up that uh, hole, basically? How does it uh, plug up that hole? Right, okay, so this is the hemostatic pathway by which you stop hemorrhage, and hemostasis, strictly speaking, the definition of hemostasis and I'll use the American English spelling now, so hemostasis, or the British English spelling is hemostasis, like so. Um, basically, hemostasis is the process by which you uh, stop hemorrhage. That's the definition of it. It's uh, the pathway by which you limit the amount of blood you're going to lose from the vascular system through this hole. Okay, so let me describe quite Brutally, uh, the, brutally, the um, portions of this process. Okay, so the first portion uh, is that you um, vasoconstrict the blood vessel. So the first, um, the starting maneuver within the hemostatic process is vasoconstriction. Okay, so what you're going to do is contract the smooth muscle around uh, the walls of this blood vessel. So let me just go through uh, the different layers of the blood vessel. Okay, so basically if we have our blood vessel now viewed from side on, okay, or rather we're taking a cross section through and we're looking at the different layers of the uh, blood vessel wall. Okay, so here is our blood vessel here viewed from side, from the side. 
Okay, and then let's have the lumen of the blood vessel right in the centre here. And lining the lumen, you'll have a bunch of endothelial cells. So here are the endothelial cells lining the lumen of the blood vessel. Okay, so I'll put little nuclei within these endothelial cells. Okay, and those endothelial cells will be sitting on a basement membrane of collagen. Okay, so let me outline this in this turquoise colour here. So uh, underneath the endothelial cells, you have this basement membrane of collagen, which is what they're sitting on. Okay, and then underneath that, you have a little bit more connective tissue known as the subendothelial connective tissue. Okay, so I might circle this in red. Okay, whoops. Try and make this not look a horrible mess by not getting the red on the same bit as the turquoise. Okay, there we go. I think that was reasonably successful. So, turquoise, we have the basement membrane. Okay, so this is the basement membrane, which is what uh, the endothelial cells are actually sitting on. Okay, and then underneath the basement membrane, what you have is more collagen. Okay, uh, so this is the subendothelial connective tissue in red. It's also sometimes known as the subendothelial space. Okay sub-endothelial space, but basically it's just a uh, portion of the blood vessel where you've got a lot of collagen. And then, underneath that, you have another connective tissue layer, but this time it's not collagen. It's a different type of protein. Instead, this time, it's mainly elastin. Whoops, I'm going over the red, so I'll try and be a little bit more careful. So, in blue here, this is what's known as the internal elastic lamina. Okay, and finally now, once we've completed the internal elastic lamina, we have completed a fir the first layer of the blood vessel. So this, in blue, is the internal elastic lamina, and it's made up of the protein elastin. Okay, right. Now, all four of these portions here, starting with the endothelial cells through the basement membrane, through the subendothelial space, onto the internal elastic lamina. All of those together are known as the tunica intima of the uh, blood vessel wall. So tunica is an old word that means layer. Intima is an old word which means close, so it's from the same origin as intermut. Uh, so it's meaning close to the blood uh, in the centre of this blood vessel. Okay, so this is the tunica intima, this entire uh, four-layered structure here. Right, then what you next have is a layer of smooth muscle cells. So let me show this layer of smooth muscle cells. So, f well, in fact, actually, I'll demarcate the edge. So actually, there's another elastic lamina, and the smooth muscle cells are within the gap between this outer elastic lamina, known as the external elastic lamina, and the internal elastic lamina. Okay, so in this gap between the two elastic laminas here, which I will colour in red, so just like this, I'll put a few little dots to denote that this is the smooth muscle cell layer. Okay, and this layer of smooth muscle cells is then known as tunica media. So this space in between these two blue lines is the tunica media, and this consists of uh, loads and loads of smooth muscle cells arranged in circles around uh, the lumen of the blood vessel. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, you'll have a smooth muscle cell maybe here, then you'll have another one connected to it, another one connected to it, and it will continue around so that you get a whole circle of uh, smooth muscle cells. And when all of these smooth muscle cells contract, what's going to happen? The circumference of the circle is going to decrease because the length of each smooth muscle cell is going to decrease. And when the circumference of the circle decreases, that will mean that the circle sort of contracts in, the diameter of it will also decrease, and that will reduce the diameter of the lumen of the blood vessel. Okay, so chinica again means layer, media means middle, so this is the middle layer. And it's bounded peripherally by this other elastic lamina, which I've already told you is the external elastic lamina of our blood vessel. So this is the external elastic lamina. Okay, then outside of the external elastic lamina, what you have 
is more collagen basically and I'll show this in yellow okay so this final layer of connective tissue consisting of the external elastic lamina and uh, this outer connective tissue here that is the chinica adventitia so these two here this is the chinica adventitia also sometimes referred to as chinica externa okay but its old name is chinica adventitia and I think that name is still more pervasive but I'll put the other one as well chinica externa right so those are the layers of the blood vessels so at least we know what we're looking at now uh, so basically one of the initial things that will happen is these smooth muscle cells will be triggered to contract, okay? Uh, and specifically, the thing that's going to trigger them to contract mainly, there are many different um, chemicals that are going to be released that are going to cause contraction, but one of the main ones is from boxane A2, okay? TXA2 for short, so this is from boxane A2. And this will be released by platelets when they discover this hole in the side of the um, blood vessel. Okay, so this is from boxane A2. Okay, right. So, what's going to happen is all of the smooth muscle cells in the vicinity of this cut are going to start contracting. And what that means is that the circumference of these circles of smooth muscle cells around the um, blood vessel are, is going to go down. And that's going to lead to the diameter of these rings of smooth muscle cells going down. And that will constrict the lumen so that less blood can actually move through this arteriole. And therefore, you're going to get less blood coming over to where the hole is. So that will also reduce the loss of blood through the hole, simply because less blood has the opportunity to go through the hole. So that's the first thing that happens in um, hemostasis. Okay, so we'll call it there for this video and continue our discussion in the next video.